Hello and welcome to another Pulsefire Gaming video. Today we're going to do a little rehashing or a redux of the uh, start to finish concept to reality um, finding your 3D printing starship and making it work. So uh, let's start with the starship. So last time we chose a starship that you can't actually get anywhere so and we didn't show you actually printing it so I think it was kind of it was a little it was a little lacking. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, I am working on the Lam Dao fleet from uh, Googleplex here on uh, Colts 3D. So this is, if you go to Colts 3D, if you search uh, Googleplex with this weird spelling or Lam Dao, which is L-A-M-B-D-A-O, uh, you'll be able to get these uh, ships on here. There's a small cost of $4, but I think I buy all of his stuff partially because I'm a licensed uh, seller of his of 3D models of his, but also because I like supporting this uh, guy. So I click on here, click download. It says I already bought this, so I need to go to my order number, download my files, and we're going to go from there. So that'll give us the Lambdao fleet uh, zip, and we'll go from there. So we're going to start with making sure that these files, and you should do this with basically every file, uh, we're going to make sure that the file is manifold, which means that it doesn't have any gaps that 3D printing wouldn't accept. We're going to choose the Lambdao Battlecruiser and put it in here. And you see the ship. It's got nice paneling. It's got almost WYSIWYG uh, uh, weapons on here. Uh, I've talked to the creator before, and he said most when he creates his own uh, ship systems displays or SSDs uh, for ships for full thrust, uh, not all of them are WYSIWYG, but in a lot of cases they are. So we have the ship. We want to make sure that it's well. So in 3D Builder, which is powered by basically NetThia Basic, uh, the Windows, um, among lots of other people, have licensed a copy of Net. Uh, Net Fab basic to repair files. So this says one or more objects is invalid. You find click to repair. It's going to go in and basically stitch everything together uh, the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, really, uh, a lot of 3D creators will uh, basically uh, design half of a ship and then completely mirror it, and that that's great. But you want to make sure that if especially if you're resin printing and you need to hollow something we're going to be doing F fdm printing for this today but if you're resin printing and you're hollowing something if it's not a one piece then your hollowing will uh, lead to errors down the road so we're going to hit save on this and we're going to stl format it we're going to put it where it goes which we're currently working out of out of our downloads file which i don't know if you can see this on there, but we're going to save over the original battle cruiser because we haven't changed anything for its size. We've just set it up to uh, be repaired. All right, let's move on to the next. Now we're going to look at sizing real quick. First, we're going to delete uh, that file that we've got in there already. That is for a different ship. We're going to take the battle cruiser and put it in here. And then we're also going to look at the largest ship that's in here, which is the heavy carrier. Now the reason why we're doing this is we want to scale this so that it sets up uh, against your table the way you want it. The ships, as they're designed by the creator, are decent for fleet scale games. Uh, especially if, if you're looking at like Full Thrust or uh, Stars and Lasers or Argosy Command, which is the, the, the rule set that the creator of this made. Uh, what is the other one that I'm, I'm scratching my head on? It doesn't matter. But if you're looking at fleet scale games, these ships work great, but on our table, we like big ships. We like Star Wars Armada scale ships. So we're going to make the uh, scale of this heavy uh, carrier, which is the largest ship, we're going to say 150 millimeters. So it should be about the size of a uh, Victory Class Star Destroyer or something like that uh, for Star Wars Armada. So we're going to go in here, and it tells us that the scaling ratio is 1.6191. Okay, so we're going to copy that. Okay. And then we're going to go in here. We're going to transform it. This is Mesh Mixer, by the way. Mesh Mixer is a uh, depreciated... Whoop, excuse me. We didn't do that right. I uh, need to actually apply that into the scale, not in the size. Uh, Mesh Mixer is a depreciated program. It's no longer in development by its uh, creators. 
Uh, but uh, it's still very powerful for quick edits and stuff like that. Uh, if you build, if you get into different workflows, and really that's what this video is, it's a workflow video showing how I go about uh, sizing and fixing and printing a model. Uh, Mess Mixture is pretty decent for, for that, for doing that. So we're going to decide that this is the front right here. That's the top. This is the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply our uh, mounting, our preferred mounting system, which is the Armada keyhole on um, there. And we're going to say yes, because we want it right here. And it doesn't always put it in the perfect place. Uh, so we're going to line this up and going to use a boolean option. Well, it's not, it is a boolean option, but it's, it's kind of half of a boolean option. So we're going to go in here and that looks good. Let's make sure it's, we hit W for wireframe mode. We're going to make sure that we're pretty much in the center and it looks like we are. So we've got this additional part for our mounting option sunk into the Thing. We're going to select both of them and we're going to hit combine. And you don't really need to do more than that. It depends on the model whether you want to throw it back into 3D Builder and see if it needs to be edited. Uh, but uh, for what we're doing, we're, this will be fine. So we're going to go in here. We're going to select the actual file that we're looking at, which is not this one. It's in our downloads. Destroy Battlecruiser. We're going to name this Battlecruiser Armada. Okay, that tells us that we've rescaled it and that we've added the keyhole. So from there, we're going to go into our slicer, and that looks like this. All right, so we're in the slicer. We're currently running Cura 5.1, 5.1.1. Uh, this is uh, the Mingda Magician X, which is the printer that we're going to be using to print on this. Uh, we're at 0.12 layer height which is actually a really good layer height. We're gonna show you our supports here on screen so you can see what we're uh, going on with the supports. Uh, these are automatic generated supports and you could choose, depending on the file that you're working on, you might want tree supports, but tree supports don't seem to work all that well uh, for some of these starships. So we're gonna just use the normal support structure and go on there. And because uh, even though the Magician X does have Auto bed leveling, we are going to use a raft. And depending on how good your printer is tuned, maybe you don't need a raft for this, but you do need supports. So let's go ahead and import the model that we got, which we're going to choose Battlecruiser Armada X. Now, when you're doing starships, the orientation depends on several things. One is your build volume. Another is the shape of the ship and how well it's going to look, uh, look like. We've printed a few of these ships and both our modest scale and their original scale in FDM, which we have, we'll have a video of that showing up uh, pretty soon. Uh, so we know kind of what we want to do. We're going to put this where the engines are down. Now, you might actually find it better, depending on the quality of your printer, to put the nose down and the engine up. And the reason for that is, most of the time when you're on a tabletop actually playing with the starships, uh, that you have most of the time you're actually gonna be staring at the back of the starship more than the front So you might want the back of the starship to look better, especially when you print with a raft the Starship is gonna look a little rough on whatever edge that you put it on Which is not true in resin if you're properly supporting your ship in resin it should look basically flawless uh, But since it's an FDM th these are considerations that you need to make especially with a raft So we're gonna go in here. We've got our settings all set up uh, again, this is 0.12 millimeters layer height. Don't know why I talk so slow just then. But okay, we're going to hit slice. We're going to let it do its thing. It slices fairly quickly. It's not a complicated uh, model. It gives us 5 hours and 28 minutes, and that's pretty spot on for what it's going to be. So when this ship is done printing, this is the battle cruiser will already have its keyhole, so we don't need to add anything else. We could just plop this on Star Wars Armada scale, um, or Star Wars Armada style uh, flight stands, or the flight stands that we use, supplied by BW Reynolds. Well, the models supplied by them. We still do the printing for them, but we're gonna save this to disk. We're gonna. Uh, this is the way that the preface looks. MMX for Mingda Magician X bat, uh, underscore Battle Cruiser Armada K, and we'll save that. 
and it says this already exists, so we're going to overwrite it. And there we go. So we'll pick this up at the printer. All right, this is the printer that we're going to be working with. And we're low on filament, but we'll have plenty for this file. So we're going to get the thing started. We've got the included uh, full-size SD card. You going to pop it in in the correct orientation. It's going to tell us that it detects it. We're going to go to the SD card. And this varies, obviously, by the printer that you're using. This is not the exact file that we sliced, but it's, it is the exact file. Uh, it's just named differently. So we're going to go in here. We're going to hit confirm. And the printer's going to heat up. All right, the printer has heated and is doing its wipe. Uh, we have completely taken off the uh, uh, cowl that sits over the, or the shroud that sits over it. So we want to make sure that a good first layer is going down. And all right, this looks pretty darn good. Might be a little high, but we're going to let this go for now. So this should take about five and a half hours. And when it's done, uh, we'll, we'll check in halfway through-ish. And then when it's done, we'll shoot the video. Thank you. All right, we are two hours in of a five and a half hour print. And it's looking damn good. All right, here we are. You could see that some support structure failed right there. But I bet the printer itself or the print itself is fantastic so let's get this off of our plate Yee! and there we go fantastic we'll get the uh supports removed and we'll take a look at the print all right now let's take a look at this print uh, now, I told in the earlier, I said that the print that we were using wasn't the one that we just sliced, but it's very, very similar. What that model is missing is the keyhole. So we have some extra keyholes that we have printed out for attaching the starships. So we'll just super glue one to the bottom. But the other method is preferred because it's cleaner. So... One thing on here is that because our print head is a little close to the bed, getting the raft off is kind of a chore. You can see it, part of it going on there. But, oh look, and it even tore off some supports. We're gonna leave that there for a second. Getting get rid of that little support right there. That support right there. That support right there. Let's grab our little X-Acto and go in here. Let's get off this edge here. Let's go this way. There we go. Okay, see, this is what we were talking about earlier. With the uh, raft, the surface of the engine is not perfect, but it's not terrible. Uh, when you prime this and paint this, uh, it'll still be there, but it'll look okay. So I believe the ship is symmetrical. Well, let's keep Let's keep moving on here. Popping off supports, popping off supports. Now that support, that's the support failure here did actually damage the print, but not critically. You can see on here, this is the result of the support failure getting in there. Uh, so this will be the bottom of the print here. Pop off that support. Okay. All right, that is everything on the back side. Now on the top. Get on here. Um, nothing over here. Let's get in here and file that a little bit. Okay, so we will discard all of the support material. I wish there was a better ecosystem for recycling used filament because when you're printing stuff with supports, you do end up having a lot of stuff that you discard because it's support material. Especially with in my situation where I'm printing things pretty constantly with rafts, 
that means that support material gets, uh, there's more support material than any other time. So we're gonna go in there, apply some super glue. This is just Gorilla super glue. It works. On the actual keyhole, we're gonna put some Instaset, which is, this is accelerator for CA glue. I don't, I almost never use the spray portion. I will generally just drip it on the end. And this bottle of accelerator will last you a very long time. Okay, because it says accelerator, L accelerator on it, we wanna do it right the first time. And, There we go. And there's a touchdown. Oh, and there's a little support material there. Oh no, that's, oh, that's the bridge. Okay, so. All right, so this was the Battle Cruiser. I will show you a painted artillery cruiser right here. This was primed with Krylon Riverstone or something like that. Uh, and then uh, we used some Monument Transparent Orange. Uh, we used the uh, Tamiya uh, panel liner, and that did not actually work great on here uh, because you've got all these little lines for it to fall into, but it, it worked pretty good. We got some, uh, this is Lead Belcher, uh, Rune Lord Brass, and then that's as far as we've taken it so far. We do need to add white into the engines and then choose an engine glow color. I recently picked up one of the new contrasts, uh, Doomfang Magenta, uh, and I like this. It's a little light. It's not as light as this uh, Pilar Glacier. This stuff barely, you need like three or four coats of this to, to, to make it uh, work well. But you could use, if you're looking for engine glows, you can use technical paints like uh, Tesseract Glow or contrast paints. You can use Army Painter transparent paints. You can use watered down regular paints as engine glow. It's just, you want a good ratio of, uh, basically you want it as tr transparent as possible. These stands, by the way, are a new prototype stand from BW Reynolds that's uh, geared towards full thrust in games like that, but also uh, if your uh, if your rule set allows you to face a different way than you move, that's what the uh, that's what this guy is all about. So you can be moving in this direction uh, indicated by the arrow, but facing maybe 90 degrees or maybe backwards, kind of like you'd see in Babylon 5 or The Expanse, something like that. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on start to finish, uh, selecting and. Uh, printing out a FDM starship. I hope you found uh, the information uh, relevant to what you want to do. Uh, I do appreciate you guys watching uh, uh, my videos. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Do the call to action bullcrap. Also, if you have questions or comments about what's going on, or if there are other things you want to see, feel free to let me know in the comment sections. This whole video is the result of someone asking a question in a previous video about orienting prints. So I'd love to get your ideas on what you wanna see so I can have content that's geared better towards the audience that I wanna to get to. Have a great day.